Well, we made it, right? We can all take a deep breath. <sighs> Scott's already crying. It's, it's a great day. So what started at a minor league baseball game, which led to a spontaneous proposal many, many, many years later, according to Grayson. And now we're here standing in front of all these people, people that love you, appreciate you, care about you, and are here to show you that those emotions and show you also that they're supporting your decision today to be joined as husband and wife. That's a beautiful thing. It's a great day. Um, marriage was God's idea. And it's a gift. I truly believe that marriage is one of the best things in this life. And you guys are going to find that out every single day with each other. And it's blessed by God. As early as Genesis 2, God said, it's not good for a man to be alone. Amen. Mm -hmm. I will make a helper fit just for him. And a few verses later, he says this. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful. We're so thankful. We're thankful that Scott's pants fit. We're thankful for marriage. We're thankful for shade. But we're thankful for your love. And God, I'm thankful for these two people here that have decided to join as one today. So God, we pray that you bless this time. And we love you. It's in your name. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. Now, who gives this woman to this man? Her mother and I. Amen. I don't think he wanted to let go. <laughs> That's normal. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 1 says this, to 9 11 says this, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. You see, in a Christian marriage, the third strand is your love relationship with Jesus. He is the bond that will hold your marriage together. So I'd like to encourage you both today that as you seek to strengthen your marriage and pursue one another in love, make seeking after Jesus the priority of your own lives as well as each other. Now, I'm going to ask you some very important questions here. And if you agree, just say, yes, I am. Scott. Are you certain that you have given your heart and your life to Jesus Christ? And are you now willing to give him your marriage as well? Yes, I am. Amen. Grayson, are you certain that you have given your heart and life to Jesus Christ? And are you now willing to give him your marriage as well? Yes, I am. Amen. All right, if you would turn and face each other now. Hold those hands and lock eyes. It's a beautiful moment. Now, always like in every wedding, I like to incorporate the audience. I don't know if it's the elementary school teacher and me before, but interaction is great. So if you're here today and you're married or engaged, or would like to be one day, maybe, hopefully that's a dream of yours. But if you are one of those married people, maybe use this time, pull your honey a little closer, hold her hand, maybe repeat these vows to each other and get that spark back that maybe has dwindled a little bit. So this is about these two right now. Here we go. We'll go slow. Scott, repeat after me. I, Scott. I, Scott. Take you, Grayson. Take you, Grayson. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or for poor. For richer and for poor. And I promise my love to you. And I promise my love to you. Grayson, repeat after me. I, Grayson. I, Grayson. Take you, Scott. Take you, Scott. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. And I promise my love to you. And I promise my love to you. Amen. Marriage is so sacred that scripture compares relationship to Christ and his church in Ephesians 5. It says, wives submit to your husbands as to the Lord, but the husband is is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. 
Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, Grayson, I know that's not a very popular thing in today's culture, but women who, who want to submit to their husband. However, Scott, and all of the other husbands out here, listen to this last part of the scripture. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Now, Scott, that last part is the secret sauce, like Chick-fil-A sauce of marriage, okay? Love Grayson like Christ loves us. Lead Grayson by giving yourself like he gave himself. That means love her deeply, be willing to lay down your life for her, but also lead by willing to lay down your pride first in the argument. Forgive first, say sorry first, and fight for unity first. Love first. Scott, as you lead as husband in demonstrating sacrificial love to Grayson, Grayson will be able to lead in her role as wife and demonstrate her sacrificial love to you. That's not always going to be easy, but it's definitely worth it. Now, one symbol of that pure and sacrificial love, respect, and union is the wedding ring, which I do have. Now, would you take these rings, you take hers, you take his, put them on third finger, and we're going to do this together. I'll put his on. <laughs> Communication is already great, guys. You're winning. Now, repeat together after me. With this ring. With this ring. With this ring. Adi Web. Adi Web. In the name of the Father. In the, in the name, name of, of the Father. Father. The Son. The, the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now Grayson and Scott have chosen to display unity with sand. Not just any sand. This sand has been blessed by Mary Granger <laughs> and her oven for drying it out. Many efforts have gone in this sand, but one of the very special things about this sand is the fact of where it came from. Not Hobby Lobby or anything like that. It came from Sunset Beach, which may not sound like anything to you, but this is a huge part of their story where they both said, I love you for the first time. Cue the awes. <laughs> All right. So if you guys would step here.
Scott and Grayson, God has joined your hearts together. Your families have given you their blessings. And now, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I pronounce you husband and wife. Scott, you may kiss your bride. It is my pleasure to present to you for the first time, Mr. and Miss Scott Jackson. 